This second week of Advent focuses on peace. The passage of Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 speaks about the Messiah who would come as being the Prince of Peace and that increasing peace would describe his kingdom rule through the establishment of righteousness and justice. In the book of Ezekiel, looking to the future of Israel, God promised to make a covenant of peace that is categorically different from what they had previously experienced. Indeed, Jesus the Messiah did come into the world at a time of violence and oppression. That is why the angelic declaration to the shepherds in Luke 2.14 was so significant. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Here we see that peace is promised, but not to everyone. This detail is often overlooked because at Christmas everyone wants warm, fuzzy feelings. The reality is, is that the first advent, Jesus, the incarnation of the eternal God of the universe, was not only a time-dividing event, making and marking the difference between the old and new, between B.C. and A.D., but it was also a divine human redefining event, as the sinless Savior was now on the scene. The angel declared that the promised peace was conditionally given, specifically among those with whom he, God, is pleased. This begs the question, who are those people? I believe that the answer is clearly revealed by looking at both the Old and the New Testaments. Concerning Abraham, before the law was given in Genesis 15, 6, it says that Abraham believed the Lord and he, God, counted it to him as righteousness. Then, in Romans 1.17, the Apostle Paul references Habakkuk 2.14, which says, The righteous shall live by faith, or by his faith. Later in the New Testament, after defining faith in Hebrews 11.1, 1, the author continues by saying in Hebrews 11.6, And without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. All of this relates back to the Advent devotional from last week about hope that flows from the new birth through faith in Christ. Likewise, in a world of turmoil, true peace is found in a person. That is why Jesus promised his disciples in John 14, 27, an out of the world kind of peace because they trusted in him. And it's the same for us today. It is my hope that you will experience God's promised peace this Christmas as a part of those with whom he is pleased through faith in Christ, the only Savior. Blessings to you in Jesus' name.